Craig, reporting for the Independent Singapore. Today, I'm at Big Hill Market to look at the hawker business. And this is the follow-up to an article posted by KFC Toe about the challenges that hawkers in Singapore are facing. So I'm here today and I'll get to interview KFC Toe a bit later and also be talking to some hawkers and find out what are the challenges that the hawkers in Singapore are facing and are we able to maintain this hawker culture which has now become part of the UNESCO World Living Heritage. Hi Sito, thank you for agreeing to do this interview with The Independent. And today we want to ask you, how is the hawker situation in Singapore facing the constraints of COVID? And how are our hawkers dealing with the situation? Give us uh, some background to this. So Singapore has uh, one of the richest uh, food culture in the world for a developed nation. It's ironic we are still selling food. I mean, we are not talking about sweet fried food or barbecue stuff. These are heritage uh, food. Coming from a hawker centre that's uh, been offering food to the masses for over, what? Over a century, you know. Um, so I, I've, I've watched that culture progress and um, it was good. Uh, it kept a lot of people happy. It kept people who have one skill, the one dish entrepreneur, um, viable. They could continue, they could feed a family, Heck, some even send their kids to overseas universities and become very, very big, prominent members of society. But as we progress into today, and I've been noticing, especially over the last 10, 20 years, I, I, maybe I see a little hurdle. The hurdle is getting higher for the industry. So, Sito, you are a food critic, very well known in Singapore. And now you seem to be uh, a voice for the hawkers in Singapore. Now, how do we in Singapore continue to preserve and maintain this unique hawker culture that we have that has won a UNESCO Heritage Award? I see a lot of young hawkers coming in, uh, three months, six months, within a year. They are not getting the stardom and the celebrity hawker status that they, they had been receiving uh, and, and uh, they give up. Because it's so easy to get a job in Singapore. So they realize, hey, I can't make three, four thousand a month. I must well go and drive right here. So I must well go and deliver food. On the other end of it uh, is that during this uh, COVID, hawker business saves lives. A lot of people were upended. Business, you know, they are retrenched. Business upended. They were they just left hanging. They came to set up a store, and of course, good. They they have a little bit of social media skills, uh, word of mouth, their friends. Um, they get by. Uh, I kind of like this. The hawker business helped them through this COVID period. Uh, but I can't uh, help but foretell that once COVID leaves us or tames, these people will go back to their regular jobs. Hawkers are facing a tough time in this, under this COVID situation. Plus, with the rental that has been highlighted by you. So, what else can we in Singapore do to hashtag save our hawkers so that we do not lose this unique culture in Singapore? Anywhere in the world is to set up a street food academy, a professional street food academy, not some, not just, uh, I mean, the very, you know, ardent NEA courses that teaches you how to set up a hawker stall like this, but a school that teaches you about the business, the world business of street food culture. How can I turn Roti Kaya into a 100, 200 outlet chain around the world and call it Yakun? How do I turn a grill some beef patty, put in between a bun, put them cheese and a pickle there and call it McDonald's? How do I do that? All these are originally street food. There isn't any around the world. And if anybody in the world is to do it, I think Singapore should. It will lead the way. It will show that this soft power of us really defines us. I mean, we're not, I don't think we should just be fintech, high-tech, biotech, and uh, whatever tech, you know. I think the soft culture plays a role. Uh, as we move along, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a warrior of culture. I like to live in a land where there's character. People are proud. 
but as we go on we adapt so many foreign things so many foreigners coming in i do not know what country this is anymore i don't know who i am anymore that's why i cling on to food i have an idea of who singaporean uh, of, uh, of what singaporeans are who we are via food you know i learned so much so yeah that's what's left of uh, cultural pride i find it through hawkers and heck it feeds us cheaply so this is a great story i i tell and sell so following your facebook post how did they determine that they're going to increase the hawkers rental under such situation what's the justification so i've been I, i've known hawkers i have uh you have a capo relationship with them you know you don't come across as so almighty to them just because you're a writer you're a food journalist or you're some celebrity and 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 they find it nice that they could tell me stories and the way i understand them so over the years people tell me little things and i find out hey that's it's not quite right, so I voice it out. You know, I question, and I at the same time not just question. I suggest alternatives to help this uh, uh, hawkers get out of the situation. The rise in the rent, um, again told to me by a friend who ate at a hawker and who told me about it. So I went to speak to the hawker, and then he told me a little bit more. So I say, I'm not here to fight for you. I'm here to fight for everybody uh, who's living through this uh, unrealistic. Uh, uh, situation of facing a rental rise in the middle of COVID. Uh, whether it's 40% or so, I don't all know. Different hawkers have different pricing, they have different uh, rental rise strategy. I don't know what's the formula the government uses to, to raise or lower their rent. But this is the thing. If you want to bid for a hawker stall, um, of course, uh, depending on where you want to bid, uh, the government naturally accepts the highest bid. You know, rule of the game. But there's this rule whereby after three years of operation, you automatically move back to the national average of that area. I think it's of area. So if you are bidding, if you are paying six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars for a hawker stall, it, it, happen, it has happened before. After three years, you can come back down to slowly come back down to a thousand, two thousand bucks. Um, for this hawker, he's, he bid low. I mean, Government asked him to bid, so he bid, he bid low. So after three years, they moved him back to uh, the average government price. To which I say, then why do you want to appear to bid? What's the point of bidding? When you just put in that average price based on that area and let people come in so people know they can project, this is what's in store for me. This is the business model I'm projecting, the sales and the numbers I'm projecting because a rental price is there, it's fixed, or it maneuvers a little bit. I mean, they are raised and, uh, and, and lowering a rent, it's very minuscule. So that, that's one thing. Um, and I say, I want to caution anybody from turning our hawker uh, culture into a business model, into a revenue generating model. Firstly, our forefathers, our four, four, four generation leaders built these hawker centers to feed the poor. The masses. Uh, it has done a good job. Even the well healed come here to eat. It was built for and by public, public money. Um, it is a service, it's an institution. So the minute you cross into, I got to generate income from this. So I think it's a bit wrong um, because you must know as you raise the rental prices. You didn't tell the hawkers that, yep, you must raise your food prices also. Uh, because you can't, there's public expectations. So you raise the rent and then the hawkers are not allowed to raise the price. So you see the conundrum, it's, uh, it's headed towards a wall. That's the way I, I see the issues coming about. So, and then they deal with this uh, tray returning thing. Uh, yeah, it's nice, you don't see trays around anymore. Uh, but the sad thing is, you have to find people. Uh, for a great country like Singapore, I find you if you if you spit, if you chew gum, if you don't return your trays, what else is going to come up? Well, you have heard from KFC To, and now it's time for me to interview some of the hawkers. These children don't want to take over the business because too many hours, 12 hours and one day off a week. So it's been quite tough for him. Huh? 
。哇、wow, ，and 你无可能自己人做啦，我搞我不拿人，可能拿人做啦。哦，六个也送，啊，我有三个送，三个送啊，哇 ，he's got three grandchildren already。所以，这个人吼，这这这这款生意吼，人觉得做小贩吼，做学哥吼，真好赚嘞。啊啊。有糖啦，也是有糖啦，无无无可能做落去啦，你做一样吼，过日子啦吼，不简单噶、啊，是很辛苦的。其他糖我等下有，有人无收噶，有人人人也无收，下面的人所以人人亲在做，有当过日，要做白菜我也是袂做。啊，你你你你无遐经验啦，我人无你做这个样，我人这个是当兵啊，到职位做职位。OK， so what he what、uh, Mr. Bay said was,、uh, you know, he, he doesn't have the experience, so he does this to keep him going and keeps him occupied enough to for him to raise a family. But then,、uh, it's nothing. Like, a lot of people sometimes have the idea that hawkers make tons and tons of money, you know. So it's it's not been easy for him. And as he mentioned earlier, that、uh, even if let's say the rental in increase as highlighted by Sito, they just have to accept it. Lor, what else can he do? He said, you know, this is the only business, and plus the children are not going to take over because it is a very physically demanding job. For him as well. So, so you know, look, 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 look. You are still online, guy. Ah, your delivery. Ah, this part. Oh, no, we pay le. Look, I hear. What we hear? Hello, guy. Don't we hear? What you want me to hear? You saw la. Ah, he told that was important, ma. Ah, tell me, did he did he like tell me? I don't want to hear. Oh, you eat that? I don't want to hear. 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 I don't want 我啊，无我靠，攞尾攞尾我才跳，跳了了啊！因为我中意个人，因为我会使这段时间我会使认识人，创咩语言啊？人家我淡薄经验会晓了，叫你来做。哦，你再来做这个啊？我才会晓。但是安尼讲，上网来搞到澳洲个会做不？无，我即毋是上网，即行旅啊。行旅个来，即行旅个啊。上网我无，我不要。上网我不要。我不要。啊。OK， so what I was just asking Mr. B， does he accept online orders？ You know？ But he was saying that no, he doesn't do that because he is not familiar with the online platform. Well, what he has is this payment mode, whereby if you want to use PayLah or something, you can still use this to make a cashless transaction. Ah, you do your six hundred million. Wow, you buy it, do 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 sell it. So, buy it, buy it, buy it, sell it. Oh, six. Oh, now you give me six hundred million. Wow, he's he's been in this business. The father started the license, then he took over, and he's been doing it for over forty years. Wow. 拢仲招我，拢仲招，安尼安尼顧嘅嗬，誒誒，唔會係咁嘅嗬。我啲直路咧是賣豆花水嘅啦，我冇賣其他物件啦。哦，誒，我請問下，你做只豆花水嘅生意係咁好做嘅？時間係正常嘅。時間有增啦，十點鐘正。差唔止十五點鐘啊！哦，哦，即種事最緊要能賣，嗬，唔係家己做嘅嗬，時間。Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. So what Mr. Tio was saying that you know everything is、uh, handmade, like you know,、uh, by themselves, like so that's why he spends about almost twelve hours a day at the shop. So, yang ning jangan hui siang kan? Oh, ning jing jing ai tui siu ai ma. You know, tiam lo bo zhong ni me. So si zhong lo bo zhong mai zhong. Zhong lo bo zhong. Zhong lo bo zhong mai zhong liao lo. Right, right, right. Right. So he said they will continue to work until the day they retire. If nobody wants to take over the business, they will just have to close shop. But it is a real pity, right? This is the situation in Singapore right now, especially for this generation. So let's hope that we highlight the pride of our hawker. Since when are you starting to sell fan or tin hot tang? Ah, we sell it, sell it, sell it. We need to sell it, sell it. Okay, what Mr. Tio, I just asked you. Many people have the impression that hawkers make a lot of money. So Mr. Tio here said that why don't you try being a hawker, and then you know how easy or how tough is the business, ah? You know, many people cannot stand the long hours. It's physically demanding. You're on your feet. I care about it, huh? You have to on your feet the whole day. You got to come very early to prepare. No, no, no. This guy is by you sick. Go in, sick, sick, sick. Ah, no, no, by you sick. Wow. No, that means he only rest once in two. There you have it. You have heard the views of KFC Tow, and also some of the hawkers who have been in business for decades. So, what's going to happen to the hawker culture in Singapore? What can be done to help and preserve the hawker culture? Will it continue to flourish, or will it likely be a day where most of them will be closed and shuttered? So, this is Craig here, following up on the story originally started by KFC, to highlighting the plight of hawkers who had to face rent increase of almost 40% on their hawker rents per month. 
So if there's any other interesting stories that you'd like us to feature, do get in touch with us. There is the contact below. And uh, we think that the story is good enough. We will come and do the interview and follow up with you as well. Till then, till the next episode, this is Craig signing off from the Independent Singapore.